We're living in a period of the greatest human mobility in recorded history. One out of every seven people on the globe is in some form of migratory status. We're also in a period of the greatest number of humanitarian disasters that we've ever seen. The last few years, we've had unprecedented humanitarian crisis. Um, and uh, we've seen crisis, natural disasters, and conflict increase globally, from South Sudan to Central African Republic, to Syria, um, to Iraq, um, to the Philippines, the typhoon that we had in the Philippines. We've seen the number of crises increase, it's not just small crises. We're talking about um, an integrated level three emergency response that uh, is requested of IOM and the whole humanitarian system in the world. This has brought us to the point where we need to ask ourselves in IOM, how good are we? What kind of principles do we put in place to make sure our staff in the field are equipped enough to help the people we're supposed to be helping? Previously, IOM has come up with the support of our member states, what we call the Migration Crisis Operational Framework. And that's an operational framework that helps us put together our response in any kind of conflict or natural disaster. But right now, we need to come up with our own principles, what we believe in. And we look at uh, internationally recognized principles of humanity, impartiality, neutrality, and independence to make sure this is ingrained in IOM's team's response in the field. And they can work with the humanitarian country teams and are able to help our beneficiaries and our member states in responding to all the crises we are facing now. The process, I think, was remarkably uh, original and innovative. Um, we had two uh, major workshops uh, in May and October 2014, which involved a very substantial number of staff, up to 50 staff, uh, involved in both plenary and breakout sessions. Between these two sort of framing um, activities, we had uh, a very uh, Im important field um, survey, uh, field study in, in the summer of 2014, which was again scoping out the main challenges in the field from six case studies, uh, essentially uh, looking at uh, natural disasters, for example in the Philippines and Haiti, but also um, uh, humanitarian conflict uh, related uh, crises in, in Myanmar, for example, and also looking sort of historically at the IOM experience in Kosovo. The principles themselves, I think, are framed around the four core principles of humanitarianism, independence, impartiality, um, neutrality, uh, and uh, humanity. Uh, but within that, I think what we've tried to do is to provide a more specific framing in terms of the operational challenges for IOM. What I particularly like to highlight, I think, are, are sort of four key areas which the principles deal with. First of all, obviously, the mainstreaming of protection, which is critical to any humanitarian organisation, not least IOM. The importance of partnership, uh, because clearly IOM works with a huge range of partners in the field. And it's important that these principles are translated right through the, uh, the implementation process for its humanitarian emergency programming. Clearly, the challenge of accountability, accountability to donors, accountability to partners, accountability to governments, accountability to the beneficiaries of IOM's programs is an important area in which principal action and, 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 and a principal stance is needed. And I think finally, the challenge of sustainability. Um, clearly, the focus is on, is on emergency situations, but as we know, most emergency situations moved into protracted challenges of displacement uh, protracted challenges of humanitarian intervention. So we need to look at sustainable programs and the way in which the principles inform that sustainability in a more development-led approach to humanitarian responses and humanitarian crises. First and foremost, the principles for humanitarian action will be for helping our staff members in the field to be able to respond with all the principles required in a humanitarian action. Um, our own staff have come to us clearly and have said this is what they want. They want to have a policy that will guide them in the field with all the issues that come up when they're responding in a humanitarian crisis. It also brings up the whole issue of our accountability to beneficiaries. It strengthens IOM's accountability to our beneficiaries. It strengthens our coordination with the humanitarian country teams in every country we're going to be responding. But at the global level, it also strengthens our response mechanism and coordination with our Interagency Standing Committee, the UN, the Red Cross movement, um, and every other partner who is in human action. 
Developing the principles themselves, I think, is going to provide the organisation with a much clearer framing of guidelines, a much more transparent approach to its operational challenges uh, in the field. And at the same time, I think the principles are going to provide a very robust framework for working with uh, its partners and in communicating externally the, the stance uh, and, and the precepts which uh, IOM operates. It's a very timely process because um, it fits into the wider context of uh, the humanitarian reform process which is taking place, in which obviously principles and particularly issues of protection are going to be central features. So I think IOM is very much sort of at, at the cusp, at the cutting edge really, of this reform process. First, I would like to thank our staff. More than 2,000 staff members of the organization were able to respond to a global survey. What the survey told us is it's really important to have this humanitarian policy, and uh, that gives us the next steps where we're we going to go from here. Um, we've discussed very closely with the Director General on how this policy is going to be implemented. One of the areas that we need to work on now is to bring this to the Policy Formulation Coordinating Committee. And we move to the next step, which is the field testing. And for the field testing, we want to look at countries which face numerous humanitarian crises, to look at those countries and field test it and see if it's fit for purpose. Um, I'd also want to thank the staff, our staff who have been working very hard in supporting the development of these processes, and I hope they will continue to engage in this process until we finalize it.